me naming my son, um, you know, in, in, uh, 1824, um, right. <laughs> something that, that was going to be fulfilled in 2024. Yeah. And so, um, I'm sure. And of course my son, that kid named remnant, he came and went long before this was fulfilled. Um, some more heavy math. Uh, Hezekiah was like, thank goodness, I don't have to deal with this. Uh, not in my lifetime. He dies in 687. So quite a, quite a bit after, because Isaiah is an old guy by now. And um, so the time between his death and, uh, and the returning of the captives where Isaiah 40 starts is, uh, is 157 years. So um, that's, that's the time break between the end of uh, 39 and the beginning of chapter 40. It would be like right. something happening in 1867, right after the Civil mm-hmm. War, and right now it's being now 2024. It, it just it's being fulfilled. <laughs> we just don't think in those terms. We we think in, in terms of, you know, next month is the election well, I... or whatever. You know, <laughs> Broncos right. season starts soon. So it's just sort of stunning uh, the time frames involved here. I mean, going back to your your visual with the three mountains you know Mm -hmm. we know that this this was in the isaiah's time but then there was the babylonian exile that would come but then in in this chapter two um it talks about john the baptist you know and that was um, the messianic uh, promise that came as well so i mean there's this one has has fulfillment 200 years into the future and then yeah seven years and then it has the, the one that we're more familiar with. Uh, right. The, the voice crying out in the wilderness of John the Baptist. and God's wanting to woo his people back because there's some that are just feeling, well, I've been betrayed. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't, you know, and, and they've been sort of assimilated into the culture of the day. And there's a lot of pagan idolatry going on here. Mm-hmm. And and in some ways, we're we're not any better today. No. Start reading it, and um, you're going to read from the New King James, right? So it's going to be you're treating us to some good poetic writing. <laughs> comfort ye, yes, comfort ye, my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. What a relief. And if even if we can't repent, God, uh, if we can't, God makes the repentance possible just by extending uh, the the rebuke. The wonderful thing about covenant is that, you know, God does what we can't do for ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what he did. For, for Judah. Mm-hmm. So, so then we go on to um, verse three that talks about the voice of one crying in the wilderness. And of course, this is the messianic um, prophecy about um, John the Baptist. Prepare mm-hmm. the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain shall and hill brought low. So that's sort of the immediate fulfillment for the exiles returning. Like, wow, we really are coming back. It's as if God uh, uh, tore down mountains and built up valleys in order for a straight path. It seems like Jesus, there's a bigger picture here that Jesus is creating a highway to bring in uh, the exiles. Yeah. Say, let's go with um, verse seven. Okay. It's, the grass withers and the flower fades because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass and the Hmm. grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Peter quotes this scripture. I want to tie that in with hope, hope for people that maybe haven't um, seen their fulfillment of things that maybe they uh, have been promised. God, you know, it hasn't maybe come forth yet, but it's imperishable. If if you are trusting in the Lord and in his promises, but they're going to come through, mm-hmm. they're going to come through. I mean, I'm another verse that comes to my mind is 
Philippians 4, 6. He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and there's these rhetorical questions that are given in the in this chapter that talk about, you know, about the idols. and Such a contrast between God saying who he is compared to who all this temporary stuff is. And, it's a, and a wooing the people, you know, look at who I am. Have you not known? Have you yeah. not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of heaven and is its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we might be like grasshoppers, but hopefully we can have this, uh, the spirit of um, Joshua and Caleb, you know, yeah. to recognize that we, yeah, we might be like grasshoppers, but we know that our hope and our trust is in the Lord. But I do want to comment on um, verse 11. Okay. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his, in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. And this verse really was a comfort to me particularly when I was a new single mom with two kids. Thought, well, I'll, I'll go clean toilets if I have to, you know, yeah. um, whatever it is, Lord, I, I, you know, help me. Um, but again, it was his, his comfort, his gentleness. And having lived in Scotland, um, I was very close to the idea of, of, lambs and shepherds and we would go down out during lambing season which is usually around january february